Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Molly, I play the viola, and I am on a journey to becoming a better musician and happier person. Today's video is actually by request. Um, one of you commented in one of my recent videos asking if I would do a what's in my viola case video. I am a big fan of makeup YouTube for years now, so I'm super interested in what's in my bag kind of videos. I know they're a little 2015, but I thought I'm. it's a cute idea for a video and maybe some of you are actually curious about what I keep in my viola case, so we're just gonna get right into it. BAM makes cases for string instruments and maybe other kinds of instruments that are super featherweight, lightweight, and really easy to carry. Um, I used to have a case that was one of those wooden ones with the black cloth covered and a zipper, and it was just so heavy. I don't like to wear it as a backpack normally. I have backpack straps on it, but normally um, when I'm going to school, I like to wear my backpack on my back and carry the viola by the handle. You know, if I'm carrying my instrument around for 10 or 15 minutes before I get to where I'm going, set the case down, get my instrument out and play it, I don't want my hand to be tired from carrying a heavy case. This is honestly one of the best, I guess, accessories I have for my instrument is this awesome BAM case. So obviously the next thing that's in my BAM case is my viola. So my viola is made by a maker named Michael Weller. He is Dutch American and the instrument was made in 1996. It's a 16 and a quarter inch viola. And what I really like about it is the body of it is super narrow. Um, I have kind of a short pinky compared to the rest of my fingers and my hands are small as it is. Um, so I really like how narrow it is here and here. It helps me reach around way more easily and overall it's just like really lightweight. It makes my life a lot easier when playing fast stuff or really high stuff. So the next thing I get out when I'm opening up my viola case to start practicing is this Kuhn Bravo shoulder rest. What I really like about it is it's adjustable so you can adjust the height by twisting these up and down, and you can also adjust the width by unscrewing these, bringing the feet out to make the whole thing wider or to make the whole thing more narrow. And because I have a narrow instrument and my shoulders are not that wide, I like to keep my shoulder rest narrow too, so that when the shoulder rest is on my instrument and I put it on my shoulder, it actually is touching my collarbone. Just imagine if this was a wider base of the viola and this whole thing was wider, then it would probably be farther away from my neck and kind of feel like it was falling off. So a lot of people have wider violas than me and I've just found that the combo of this Kuhn adjustable shoulder rest plus my narrow viola works really well. Up next are my bows. I have one nice bow that I play with almost all the time. Uh, it is just your standard viola bow. One thing I really like about the grip is this plastic imitation whalebone. I guess decades ago it would have actually been made out of whalebone, but um, it's a really nice grip for my finger. I like to kind of press with my pointer finger and insert my arm weight into the string through my pointer finger and I found that just the metal wire wrapping um, around this part kind of uh, irritates my skin. So I found this to be much better. And then I also have my backup bow. My backup bow is the same length and size pretty much. Um, it's just not as nice of a bow and it doesn't suit my 
desires and needs as a professional young violist as well as the bow that I prefer to play on. If you can, it's always good to have a backup bow, even if it's the crappiest bow, just in case something happens to your preferred bow and you need to still play. About a year and a half ago, I was at a church gig and um, we were all just warming up. And of course I was using my good bow and suddenly I didn't hear anything, but suddenly just all the hairs fell from the tip. Something broke on the tip of my bow and it just caused all of the hairs to detach and just like fall to the ground. They were still attached here. So it was kind of like loose hair everywhere. And um, that was pretty scary. So luckily I had my backup bow. I played the gig and as soon as I could, I went to the violin shop and said, fix my bow, please. So next are the things that I use to take good care of my instrument. The first thing is this microfiber cloth. It has a little bit of like dirt and oil and dried up rosin on it. I wipe my strings after I'm practicing every single time, after every rehearsal, every lesson, I always wipe my strings off. You'll hear about my rosin soon, but I like to use a lot of rosin. I found it helps me project my sound really well. So it's always good to just wipe your strings off every time, make a habit out of it so that rosin doesn't cake up on the string. So next I have my little satchel of goods. <laughs> so there's a few things in here. The first I'll talk about is my practice mute. It's a rubber practice mute and it goes over the bridge like this. And uh, what it does is it dampens the vibrations of the bridge. So the, the whole instrument pretty much is made of wood other than the strings. And when you play, all of the wood vibrates to make the sound that you make when you are drawing your bow across the string. So the string vibrates and then the rest of the instrument sympathetically vibrates to make an amplified sound, a naturally amplified sound. So when you put this rubber mute on the bridge, that dampens some of the vibration. If the bridge isn't vibrating as much, then the whole, the rest of the instrument kind of sounds more quiet. I'll show you the difference. So this is with the mute. Uh... And this is without the mute. That really comes in handy when staying in a hotel or at a friend's place, or I wanna practice and it's kind of late at night and I don't wanna disturb people around me. Um, the mute helps for the sound not to carry uh, beyond the walls of the room that I'm in. So the next thing in my little satchel is my rosin. So I actually use two kinds of rosin. The first kind is this one. It's called Hill Dark. I like this rosin because I find it's really sticky and firm and helps me to articulate and get a big sound and project a lot. But the downside of it, I think, is that it makes the sound a little bit rough. So I use a second type of rosin after applying the Hill Dark to my bow. And this is the Gustave Bernadelle. Uh, I dropped it and broke it like a year and a half ago. So still works just great. Um, so it's a little bit less of a powerful rosin in my opinion, um, but it helps to kind of soften the edge that the Hill Dark gives to the bow. I like to use the Hill Dark 80% of the way to rosin my bow just for all the power and the grit and the articulation. And then to make sure that I can still have a smooth, clear, resonant sound, I top it off with some of the Bernadelle rosin. And the last thing in my case is Ariane in-case humidifier. Violas are made of wood and wood expands and contracts depending on the temperature and the humidity level of the climate you're in. In most places in the world, that varies throughout the year. So um, most people have one form of maintaining a stable humidity in their case, one form or another. I don't really like to use dampets. I've never really used them. Um, it kind of freaks me out putting it inside my instrument. So instead I opt for this. It has little gels that expand and contract with humidity. It's pretty much summer here in Houston, so I'm not really worried about it getting too dry in my case, but during the winter, um, what you do is you take distilled water and you fill it to this line and then the gels expand and provide a healthy amount of humidity to the viola while it's resting in the case when I'm not playing it. One last thing I thought I would mention, this is my regular 
mute that I have, I usually keep it on my D string on the wrong side of the bridge, just kind of hanging out there. So in case I'm in orchestra rehearsal or something, I can quickly put it on and then take it off. I usually don't like it having having it there. It, it usually doesn't really cause any issues, but there's always a chance that it'll be a little askew and then rattle and I'll have to fix it. And so for recitals and solo performances where none of the music requires a mute, I take it off. But um, especially if I'm in orchestra, it's kind of embarrassing when, and it says cone sordino in the music, which means with the mute and everyone reaches to put their mute on and I reach there and it's not there and I'm kind of just like have to awkwardly put my hand back down. Um, so when I'm in orchestra, which luckily at Rice, I have been able to be in orchestra, it's good to have my mute there because it's hard to keep track of which pieces need mute and which ones don't. So it's always good to just have it there. So anyway, this was kind of a fun, different kind of video to make. Thanks for watching and thank you to whoever it was that asked for this kind of video. A lot of the things I have in my case, um, I've acquired over almost like 13 years of playing. I didn't start out with this viola, I didn't start out with this bow, I didn't start out with this case. I had much cheaper, more beginner things, and honestly, I was a beginner, so it was fine. I had whatever block of rosin the teacher handed to me in my elementary school strings class. If you're a beginner, you do not need all the fancy stuff I have. But if you're looking to upgrade your rosin or upgrade your practice mute or just get an idea for something to up your viola case game, maybe something I have inspired you to do that. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. Um, here's my Instagram. Go follow me. Um, subscribe if you liked this video, if you like hearing people named Molly Wise play the viola. If you want to follow my journey, I kind of just use YouTube as a practice journal, trying to feel better about myself as a musician, and get better at viola, and just have a better outlook and mindset on life and practicing and performing. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, please follow me and subscribe and comment down below on what video you'd like to see next. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next one.